all, I'm really excited to get started on the recipes today. I plan on making a lot of breakfast meals. It's almost back to school, which means mornings are going to be chaotic, or at least they are for me. I have four kids and when it's breakfast time, I'm just like, I don't eat anything. We gotta go. So hopefully to make a smoother transition, I always like to have some breakfast prepped and ready to go. I'm sure some of these things you can freeze, which I like to have stuff in my freezer, but I also wanted to try some new recipes. It's kind of like make ahead where you can make a bunch, maybe the day before, maybe a few days before, and then eat for days to come. Do you know what I mean? We're all looking for those quick, easy, healthy, kid-friendly recipes. Is that too much to ask for? I don't think so. So I've gathered some up from Pinterest. I've been on the hunt for months, I feel like. So this is what I came up with. Apple crisp breakfast bars. They look deline. <laughs> deline, it's a new word. Delicious and divine. Ooh, and then one for mom. I don't know if my kids will eat this. They probably will. A lemon crumble breakfast cake. <laughs> Drooling. Put the word cake in front of breakfast and I'm there for it. Ready to eat. Is this one healthy? Probably not so much, but we'll move on. Bacon, egg, and cheese turnovers. Sounds okay. Cinnamon roll cake, again, probably not the healthiest, but if you eat cinnamon rolls for breakfast, you know that takes time, you have to rise the dough. This is like a cake version, and I'm excited about it. I actually, I feel like I've made this many, 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 many several years ago, back in the stone age when I only had one child. <laughs> Alex is at the window. Oh, why? He's gonna give me a heart attack one of these days. Melt in your mouth sweet cream pancakes. What? Sweet cream. Sweet cream. You know, sweet creams are made of this. I don't know if I'll be able to stop that. Uh, yeah, so we've all had pancakes before, but have you had sweet cream pancakes? Who knows? I figured these are worth a try. Banana oat Greek yogurt muffins. That's probably the most healthiest one. Uh, yeah. I made a bunch of different variations of like banana muffins over the past years, but this looks like an interesting recipe, so I'm gonna try it out. I've also recently made a bunch of brunch recipes and just breakfast recipes in general. You guys know I am always sharing recipes with you. I thought the very first one we should start with is the apple crisp breakfast bars. And because it reminds me of that candle that I am in love with, let me go get it. Cinnamon, apple, and oats. This is a DW candle. I'm in love with their candles. I feel like it's not too heavy on the cinnamon. It smells like real life. You know what I mean? Like I'm really baking a cinnamon, apple, and oats. It's like more of a mild, yeah, I'm gonna light it. I need a lighter. Sweet creams are made of these. I'm just gonna leave this right here. Get the ambiance going, okay? <laughs> I'm already thirsty. Don't forget to hydrate. It wasn't enough. Purifies the soul. All right, let's go, what do we need? The recipe calls for quick cooking oats and I typically always buy the whole oats because they keep you fuller longer, they're just better for you all around, and, and usually they don't really have much of a different cooking time, but I have been messing up recipes lately, so I figured I don't wanna take the chance. You also need flour. 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 You can call me flour if you want to. Every time, guys. How is it even possible that every single time I have to make something with flour, I have to fill this up? BRB. Sweet dreams made of this. Okay, I got all the butter that I own and the flour. You know what, a lot of you told me the hack. Pour it in the kitchen sink and it's like the first time ever that my kitchen sink isn't full of dishes. So in order to prevent a mess on the counter, you do it in the sink. Who here thinks I'm still gonna make a mess? All right, you know what? Ooh! Minimal mess. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're gonna make one more thing because I don't have a recipe printed out. I wrote it down. We're making breakfast enchiladas. Oh, I can't wait for those. I'm reminded because my turkey sausage is thawing over here in this sink. That's right, I said turkey sausage. It's going to be like one of the healthier breakfast options that we make. All right, where were we? Ah, hey gal, cinnamon corn sausages, whatever, maple syrup. Maple syrup? So I have a not even cinnamon, it's pepper. 
Oh, my spice cabinet. Every day gives me trouble. <laughs> Please tell me that I have cinnamon. I mean, I know I have cinnamon. I just don't know where it is. There it is. Guess where it was. Last place looked. Okay, it, this is getting to the point where it's a hazard. Okay, before we really start, I just have to say something. There is something so special. For whatever reason, I'm feeling the fall vibes right now. I don't know if it's like back to school season or because it's semi-raining outside. My dishwasher is going. I've got a candle lit. It smells like fall and I'm about to make some apple crisp breakfast bars. So I am feeling it. So I'm just curious, do you guys like feel a certain way when there's like no dishes in your sink and you know? <laughs> Am I alone? It's really just this candle. Man, it's, it's magic is what it is. So here I think is everything that you're going to need. Quick cooking oats, salt, vanilla, cinnamon, corn starch, maple syrup, some flour, egg, apples, star of the show, and a few tablespoons of butter. Let's do it. First we have to preheat the oven. Oh, an eight by eight baking dish. See, I don't have one of those. Oh boy. I have these. One cup of quick cooking oats, one cup of flour, level it off, and a little bit of salt. Give it a whisk just to aerate it. Okay, then you add a quarter cup of butter, softened, and a quarter cup of maple syrup. Ooh, guys, give it so much good flavor. And you just mix this together until it resembles a coarse texture. I'm pretty sure I could just eat this as it is. You know what I mean? This is kind of like cookie dough. Not as delicious. Okay, I think this is a really nice texture. And then you reserve half of it? No, a half a cup of it for topping. We're gonna need more than half a cup for that. Is this half a cup? I think this is a cup, but we'll just reserve that much for the topping. Okay, and then you're supposed to scramble an egg in a different bowl. Uh, I'm not about to dirty another bowl, so I'm just gonna do it right in the middle. Just gonna create a little well here. Scramble it and then combine the dough. This actually looks like quite a lovely dough. And then we take our pan that we put parchment paper in. Oh, I have parchment paper. I knew I had parchment paper somewhere. Guess where it was? It was under my cabinet, so weird. I'm never a huge fan of using parchment paper because it's, it's like this, you know? Like what the heck am I supposed to do? All right, just plop the dough in there and then spread it out. I'm gonna put a little water on my hands so the dough doesn't stick to my hands. Is this a single serving? I should have doubled this recipe, if not tripled. Well, I guess we have to try it out, right? I'll let you know if it's delicious and if you should double it. You guys know I have to taste the dough. Salmonella, I dare you. Yeah, it's not great. Tastes like salt. Ooh, actually I got that butter flavor right at the end there. Okay, now I'm gonna cut up, two, it says two apples. And at first I thought, oh, two apples, that seems a little ridiculous. But now that I'm looking at the serving size of the pan, that seems pretty accurate. I'm just gonna cut around the core and then cut the pieces, dice the pieces up, you know? Nothing too fancy. I'm going to add all the apples into a bowl, the same one that I mixed all the other crap in because I'm not washing extra bowls. Okay, now we just mix in two tablespoons of maple syrup, and then one teaspoon of cinnamon, and one teaspoon of cornstarch. Give this a nice mix together. And I don't know, if, if I make these again, I'll probably do this step first, and then start on the dough just to let the apples like marinate in these juices a little bit. That's what I do when I make apple pie anyway. So now that the mixture is done, you just pop it on top of the oatmeal. This is like apple pie almost. Delicious. Now we top it with the reserved oats. And this is probably my favorite part. I mean, I've never had this before, but just the topping of anything, of a crumble, my favorite. Okay, that looks good. Into the oven, 411 degrees. I don't know how long, I only printed out one page. <laughs> Ooh, bake 40 minutes, okay. All right, one recipe done. It smells so good in here. I don't know if it's because of the candle or the apples in the oven, but I'm feeling pretty good. Who am I to disagree?
long as I can make Big creams are <laughs> made of this. I'm telling you guys, music can change your soul. If you're ever in a funk, just turn on the music. Turn on a song. I'm gonna clean all of this up, catch my breath, <laughs> and then we're gonna move on. Moving on to the bacon, egg, and cheese turnovers. They sound good, they look good, let's do it. Bacon, cheese, egg. I'm not quite sure I have enough bacon because I've been eating it straight from my freezer. Oh my gosh. Well, whatever I have will be enough. Technically, you need four pieces. You guys know I like to go above and beyond. I have about, I don't know, more, a little more than four. Four pieces of bacon. I also have some Canadian bacon over here. I have some mozzarella cheese, puff pastry, chive and onion cream cheese. Oh, everything but the bagel seasoning. And then some green onions because I did not want to spend the money on chives from my grocery store. Oh, and eggs. So let's get to it. Okay, first things first, you have to cook the eggs over here. So it says to uh, obviously like whip your eggs before you cook them, but I don't want to dirty a bowl, so I'm just gonna crack them right here. Forget you saw that, okay? And I'm probably going to cook six eggs. We're making six turnovers. So I can't imagine four eggs is enough for that. So I'm going rogue like I normally do and I'm kind of making it my own recipe. We'll be fine. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and crack that whip. Okay, as the egg mixture starts to come together and kind of solidify, we are to add four ounces, which is one cup of mozzarella cheese. And of course you can adapt this to anything if your kids don't like mozzarella. I assume this is just like a really creamy cheese. You can of course use yellow cheese, American cheese, whatever cheese that your kids do like. And then it says to add scallions to this. Let me turn the heat off uh, because this is, my eggs are done. Just remember they are going in the oven so you don't want them like super, super done. I like a lot of the onion flavor so I'm gonna add quite a bit to this. And my kids eat onions every day so I'm sure they're not going to care either. Okay, I'm gonna give these a toss and then I'm going to have them wait on me back here. Okay, now I have some puff pastry dough which is like, who doesn't love puff pastry dough? It is so delicious. A really easy dessert bonus recipe for you. I mean, you could serve it as, I've eaten it as a breakfast before. You get almond paste and put it on the inside. Um, that's all you need. It's so good. And then maybe some slivered almonds to top it off. Okay, we need six pieces out of this. So I guess I'm just gonna cut them in thirds. They're already pretty much folded where you can cut them evenly. Okay, you're just going to spread a little bit of the cream cheese on every piece of puff pastry. And again, if your kids don't like the flavored cream cheese or you can find a flavor that you do like, I just happen to really like onion and chives. I'm gonna manipulate some of these pieces just to make them a little wider. This would be fun. You can even make like strawberry cream cheese and then add whatever filling that you like in here. It's like a, what are those things called? Pop, pop pastries that you put in your Pop-Tarts? Is that what they're called? Pop-Tarts, but like DIY, you know? Bonus points if you make your own puff pastry. But I'm definitely not keeping score, so here we are. Okay, then we're gonna put a little bit of bacon on each one. This is pre-cooked bacon, and now I understand why you only need four pieces because these are pretty little. I feel like the possibilities are kind of endless with what you can do with something like this, you know what I mean? So just take this concept and then add whatever the heck you want to. All right, I guess this is for me. So now I'm gonna take the egg mixture and just plop it right on top there, evenly between all six of them. And then, I'm sure you can guess, we fold it over, trying to keep everything inside so it doesn't like squirt out when you're baking it, you know? I think we did a pretty good job. Oh, you know what? I was on Amazon the other day and I almost ordered this thing that like crimps edges and I was like, how often am I gonna use that? You know, realistically, never. But I was not anticipating this moment, so I would be using it right now. Okay, you can use a fork, or if you have a fancy tool, use that. to seal off the edges. Cool, cool, that took 20 years. Ah, well, I messed these up. You're supposed to put egg wash on the edges and then fold them to make sure they stick. I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Well, we're gonna find out, right? 
I'm going to transfer these to a pan. I feel like I don't need to grease it because the puff pastry has so much butter in it. Here I have some egg wash. I guess I have to wash a bowl anyway. It's just an egg with a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna coat the tops of these and we're gonna add something delicious. This is just gonna make the pastry nice and golden in the oven. Mm, I can almost taste it. Are you more of a savory person for breakfast or do you like the sweets? I mean, I'll eat both if I'm being really honest. But there are some days where, I mean, a lot of days I eat leftovers for breakfast, like leftover dinner, because I just don't really feel like making myself anything. And plus, you know, food doesn't go to waste. So it's a win-win, or at least that's what I tell myself. Okay, and here's the kicker. You top it with a little bit of everything but the bagel seasoning. I know not everyone is a fan of this, so I'm just gonna do two and then leave the rest off and I might regret that because I well this one already has stuff on it so I'm just gonna do how about half that seems like a good compromise okay into the oven how long 30 minutes here we go perfect timing because our apple crunch is done I know you can't smell this it's either this or the candle I can't decipher which is which but they both smell really similar and really really delicious so I can't wait to get it out of this filthy uh, wax paper and see what it actually looks like under there it's very promising hey I feel like we're rolling along I tidied up the next one I really want to make is the lemon crumble breakfast cake I cannot wait to eat that. But I feel like you slash your kids are most excited about the cinnamon roll cake. I've had this before. Okay, so I feel like we'll make the cinnamon roll cake, the enchiladas, then the lemon breakfast crumble, then the sweet cream pancakes, and then banana oat Greek yogurt muffins. That's a mouthful. Will we get to it all? To be determined, okay? We're gonna do as much as we can. So, cinnamon roll cake, we need flour. Sugar, vanilla, butter, baking powder, salt, eggs, and that's just for the cake mixture. There's also a topping and a glaze. Sounds like fun. So let's get this cinnamon roll rolling. No? Okay. This is like the easiest directions. Mix everything together except for the butter. Okay. Three cups of flour. Easy enough. Three. A little bit of salt. One cup of sugar. Uh-oh. Four teaspoons of baking powder. Remind me to pick some of this up next time I'm at the grocery store. Two eggs, crack them one-handed, or you're a booger. A little bit of vanilla, delicious. Oh, milk, I forgot about that one. One and a half cups of milk, ooh, whoops. I don't have enough. <laughs> this is also half and half, not milk. You work with what you have, okay? I have some almond milk we're gonna try here. Ooh, this looks good. One and a half. And I'm just gonna give this a nice mix and we're gonna pour it into a 13 by nine inch dish. Is that what size it is? Yeah, nine by 13 pan. Oh, ooh, oh yeah, that's right. Mix all the ingredients together except for the butter. I was like, man, this is looking dry. Okay, so here's the cake batter so far and I just melted some butter and it says just to pour it right on in there. Okay, hey, well this is like kind of weird. It's like when you get Play-Doh that's too dried out and then you try to wet it with water. That's <laughs> what's happening right now. I think it'll all work out. I remember making this. You know what, let me try the batter, right? Salmonella, I freaking dare you. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Oh my gosh, that tastes delicious. It's a solid batter. Um, I'm gonna grease a pan just using the skin of the butter and the rest of this butter too, why not? I'm gonna pour this out into the pan. I feel like if we stopped there, I'd be happy. Like, I like plain things. Oh my gosh, I wonder if I could just keep this in my fridge and just lick it every once in a while. This batter is so good. It is quite thick. All right, let's move on to the topping. Right into this bowl again, one cup of butter that's softened, one cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of flour, and where did I put that cinnamon? One tablespoon of cinnamon. Nice. Give this a nice mix. Word to the wise, use your KitchenAid and perhaps not the tiniest spatula you own. I feel like it needs a little bit more cinnamon considering that's like the only real flavor in this cake. I also feel like you could add, I don't know, walnuts or pecans to this. We currently don't know if Avelina is allergic so I'm going to keep them out. I know that she would enjoy this. 
but she did have her allergy testing, which, ugh, finally, right? All right, what's next? Uh, so now we just take little uh, droplets of this and then swirl it in. <laughs> I mean, what does this have? Three sticks of butter in it? Your kids are definitely gonna be wired and ready for the day after they eat this. <laughs> I'm thinking I may save this for like a dessert type of thing, but I saw it on Pinterest and I just thought, well, if someone thinks it's breakfast, surely that's good enough for me. Here comes the fun part. You just give it a nice little swirly whirl. Any design that you, am I, am I messing this up? Oh, dang. I feel like I came in like a pro and uh, I'm sure it's all gonna be okay, right? You can't mess this up. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. But we need some of this over here. <laughs> all right, I feel like that looks really good. Salmonella, I dare you. I'm gonna take a picture for the gram. Nice. And then we're gonna pop this into the oven, ideally 350, but you know how we do, 411 degrees for about 28 minutes. Okay, now that the sweet stuff is done, let's move on to a savory breakfast. Okay, we're moving on to the breakfast uh, sausage, what is this called, turkey sausage breakfast enchiladas. I finally found some breakfast sausage that was turkey in the frozen section, I couldn't find it anywhere else. You need some egg whites, some eggs, cilantro for topping, pepper, onion, ooh, green chilies and enchilada sauce. Okay, can I, ch oh, and some cheese. I, well, oh, I'll get that when I need it. I'll probably forget. This is the first recipe I had that kind of made me think, oh, I should prep some breakfast. I was going to make this for dinner one night and I think you totally could do that, like a breakfast for dinner type of thing. I mean, there's something about breakfast where it's like, okay, it's socially acceptable to eat it uh, any time of day, especially if it's pancakes. And why is pancake at breakfast? Like, why is that cinnamon roll cake okay to eat for breakfast? I don't know. I don't question anything because I'm okay with eating cake any time of day. But I'm most excited about this one. It has some vegetables in it, which is my favorite. It seems like it's going to be a crowd pleaser. Oh, you also need tortillas. Oh, by the way, these came out of the oven. Did you see? Here they are. Don't they look fantastic? Ooh. Ah. Okay, so <laughs> I don't really know what we do first. I guess I'll just get my mise en place ready. I'm just gonna chop up the pepper and onion and then we'll get it cooking. Okay, now that this is done, I'm going to bring this and the ground sausage to the stovetop and cook it up. Well, I dumped everything in there and I was talking to you about the woman I got this recipe from, which is the woman across the room. Her name is Elise, she has an Instagram. I will try to remember to link her below, but her website is Macro Friendly Foods. So she has a ton of like healthier recipes. I know healthy is a subjective term, but for me, like this is obviously healthier than a cinnamon roll cake. Do you feel me? So I love every recipe that I've ever made from her. So I would highly suggest uh, checking her out. Ooh, this breakfast sausage. Ooh, that smells good. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you add a can of green chilies. I think you're supposed to drain those, but like, how do you even? So I'm just gonna mix them in there. Of course you can omit them if you don't like them or change up the vegetable if you don't like peppers. So on and so forth. Use recipes as a guideline. It's your kitchen. Okay, once this is all cooked, I'm gonna take it off, put it over to the side here, and then we're going to cook the eggs. So a little bit of oil, and then you add six eggs, a five and a six, and then you add six egg whites. And so on the back it says four large egg whites is half a cup, but I was under the impression that a quarter cup was one egg, so I don't really know how much to add but I figure we can't go wrong. We'll just do like three quarters of a cup and then a little bit of salt and pepper for these two. Maybe a little more egg white, why not? What am I gonna do with the rest? And then just make sure these cook evenly and don't get burned. Pretty simple. Okay, and then you just dump the eggs in with the sausage mixture, <laughs> if it'll go. All right, there we go. Man, this pot is heavy. I'm just gonna give this a toss to incorporate all the ingredients. That looks like a good egg 
to sausage ratio. All right, let's take it over to some tortillas. Okay, so the recipe says to use one 15 ounce can of enchilada sauce. I guess you could use red enchilada sauce, but I prefer the green sauce. So that's what I'm using. And you pour half of it in the pan before the tortillas go in. There's just so much flavor in enchilada sauce. And then I'm going to roll up the mixture into eight, I think it says. Eight flour tortillas, but I feel like uh, we'll get more than eight out of here. We'll see. I'll do my best to like measure it out. Yeah, it's hot. I don't know. What do we need? Two scoops in each one? Let's do that. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? I could almost kiss the stars for shining so bright. When I see you smiling, I go, oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, that's enough of that. So there is at least a cup of filling in each of these and there's still some left over after I filled eight of them. And one of my favorite things about enchiladas is that you don't have to like fold up the sides like in a burrito and i just think it's so much easier <laughs> i mean i'm losing filling but it's totally fine it makes it foolproof like yes you can make this anyone can make this and it's going to taste delicious and of course if you don't want to make enchiladas you can just eat the filling as is this is very similar to one of my favorite breakfasts where i just make eggs and a whole bunch of veggies it's a crowd pleaser. Oh no, that one broke. I had to roll it too tight. Here goes this one. Maybe there's too much filling in it. Okay, I just took a taste test of the filling. Wow, is it good. I've never had turkey breakfast sausage before, but the benefit of doing um, turkey is obviously if you don't, one, don't eat pork, but I think it's lower in calories as well. Oh my gosh, eight fit perfectly. So I guess this is like an extra breakfast for one day, you know? Yes, I eat with my fingers, leave me alone. This is my kitchen. What are you gonna do about it? You're gonna kick me out of my own kitchen? Now we take the rest of the enchilada sauce and just pour it over top. Oh, that looks so good. Do you like enchiladas? I'm not a huge fan of like soggy stuff, but for whatever reason, I really like enchiladas. Maybe just the ease of it all. Should we like spread that out? Yeah, why not? You know, just use your hands the best tools you have on the end of your wrist. You can wash your hands. It's no big deal. Did I wash my hands after I ate? You'll never know. I mean, this looks incredible. Oh, but we're not done. Okay, well, I just referenced back to the recipe. You're supposed to put one cup of cheese and divvy it up between all of the tortillas. Oh, I didn't do that. And then you're supposed to put one cup on top so I'm just gonna throw some cheese on top and call it a day. Then we cook it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Yum. Okay, next I'm gonna whip together, <laughs> hopefully it whips together pretty easily, the lemon crumble breakfast cake. Listen, I know this is for me, but sometimes we need, I mean, we need to eat breakfast, right? I need to eat breakfast while you eat your cinnamon roll cake. I can enjoy my lemon crumble breakfast cake. I hope it is delicious. The ingredients seem pretty simple for a cake. Butter, sugar, flour, and eggs, and all that good stuff. So we need our food processor. There are two parts to this cake. That's what makes it so delicious. I mean, I've never had it before, so I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Our cinnamon roll cake came out of the oven, and I think we need to make a glaze for it. While warm, drizzle the glaze. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's do that real quick. Two cups of powdered sugar. Pretty simple glaze. It's just sugar, milk, five tablespoons of milk, a one, two, three, four, five, and a drizzle of vanilla extract. No whisk it until it's like a glaze consistency. You just have to keep on mixing. It'll get there. If you don't have milk, you can use water to make the glaze as well. If your kids are adventurous, you can even add um, different flavors of extract or the zest of like an orange or a lemon in here and that would really be delicious. Okay, here's our glaze. It's a little thick, but it's going on a warm cake, so I think it's gonna be good. 
Here's the finished cinnamon roll cake. I have made cinnamon roll cake. Anyone get that movie reference? Let me know. I'm just gonna drizzle this over top. Uh, ooh, the drizzle. Some would argue this is the best part of a cinnamon roll, the icing, right? Uh, so don't skimp out. I'm just going to kind of smear it all over, mess everything up, it looks good. I feel like the middle is not cooked, but okay. So there it is, the cinnamon roll cake. I can't wait to dive into this. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm just waiting for it to cool down and stuff. Now back to the main attraction, the lemon crumble breakfast cake. Okay, it says to first make the crumble, combine sugar, lemon zest, and food processor. Okay, one step at a time. One third cup of sugar into the food processor. And I'm gonna grab my microplane and I'm going to zest my lemon. I love lemons. Oh my gosh, I'm already drooling. Okay, so apparently you pulse this until it's a pale color. Oh, I guess I have to plug it in. Okay, that seems about good. Just take a peek, will you? Ew, it's hot. Okay, uh, this next part, the instructions aren't too specific. We have four tablespoons of melted butter, and it says to combine the butter with the flour. Oh, okay. Okay, in here, in a bowl. Hold up. The directions are perfectly fine, it's me. No one is surprised. Ow! Four tablespoons of butter. I picked the very wrong bowl to melt it in. Now, we add flour. Three quarters cup of flour. The lemon sugar. Oh man, this lemon sugar smells amazing. Why do I like lemons so much? And then, what do we need? One tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Oh my gosh. Oh, I hope I smell like lemon for the rest of the day. It's gonna get half of the lemon juice, or the lemon juice from half of the lemon. I'm gonna squeeze it in between my hands so that my hands catch all of the seeds. And now all the cuts on my hands are burning. Ooh. And then you just combined all of these, and this is the crumble for the top of our lemon crumble breakfast cake. Look at that, nice and simple, and one part is already complete. We're basically halfway to eating it. But I mean, like, what's stopping us, so. A bon appetit. I wouldn't recommend eating that, okay. <laughs> Moving on to the cake, I guess we also make some part of it in the food processor. Oh, wow. Okay, man, I had to ask Google how, what half of three quarters cup is. So apparently it's a quarter plus two tablespoons, which is like a, a half of a quarter cup. Now it's getting all kinds of confusing. Anyway, you put half of the sugar into here and I'm gonna spend the rest of my day zesting two lemons in here. I mean, it's worth it because the flavor is just out of this world, but it does take, you know, that extra minute or two. Okay, I gave you a great view, by the way. That was fantastic. We're gonna do the same thing with this, and that is combine the zest and the sugar and pulse it. In the meantime, I came over here to check on the enchiladas. Uh, when I melted the butter, I turned off the timer, so it got a little burnt, but that's how I like things. We're gonna sprinkle it with cilantro and it's gonna look divine. You see those bubbles down there? Yeah. All right, now our oven is empty. It's a travesty. We're going to finish this cake over here. I don't really know what we need. I just know we need a paddle attachment. Butter, sugar, lemon sugar. Do you have some of that water? Sugar, water, sugar. Half a cup of butter. The rest of the sugar, which is a quarter cup, and then the two tablespoons. The lemon sugar. I'm sure there's some reason that we made lemon sugar. I just wanna make sure I get all of it. You know? All right, let's beat this for several minutes until it's nice and fluffy. Well, I guess while that's going, I will throw together the other dry ingredients because I like to follow the recipe to the tea. We need two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and salt. And if you ask me, we just waste in a bowl, mix it together, and put it aside. 
All right, let's move to the mixer. This looks pretty light and fluffy to me. When you're making a cake, you want the butter and sugar mixture to resemble like buttercream, and that ensures your cake is just perfection. And that's exactly what this looks like, buttercream. Now we're going to add one egg at a time. But you guys know I don't follow rules, so I'm doing two. Oh my gosh, another step. So we also need some lemon juice. We need a quarter cup of lemon juice and half a cup of buttercream. So I'm just gonna get the lemon juice going here. You know, one thing that would make this little gadget better is if it had measuring lines on the side. Like, I think that's a quarter cup, but is it? Should I keep going? Let's find out. This is a quarter cup. Will it fill up? Barely. Okay, cool, that should do it. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Oh, twice on the pipe. If the answer is no. Okay, here we go. So we're back to this mixture over here. Did we add vanilla? Do we? I don't think we need to, it's fine. And this recipe better be delicious. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides. And in all the fancy uh, cake recipes, which one do we do first? We only do like one third of the flour and then some of the buttermilk. And I need to actually buttermilk. Flour, buttermilk. Here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna combine the buttermilk and the lemon, just for ease, and give it a nice stir. Flour goes first, about a third of it. That's cool. Give it a mix. Uh, please do not overmix. A third of the buttermilk mixture. Mix it up. We're gonna add some more, about half of the flour mixture that's left. Mix it in the KitchenAid. The rest of the buttermilk <coughs> goes in. And if you look closely, you can see your arteries clogging. Scrape down the sides. We want all the goodness. Lastly, the flour mixture. And whip it. But don't over whip. Take it to a spring form pan. I also think I donated my springform pan. You know, there have been like a hundred times where I thought, oh, I would like to use this. Oh, but I donated it. So for all those people who were like, you'll never regret donating things and getting rid of things. Oh, yes, you will. Yes, you will. Unless it's back here. Ow. I need a flashlight. Oh, guess what? Tis back here. I can't really reach it though. Woo! Okay. Oh, I saved my pants. This calls for a celebration. Doesn't uh, doesn't stick, and then I'm just gonna rip the rest off here. It's a little secret my great 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 grandfather gave me. He was a world-renowned baker. Okay, what do I do? Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're finally done with this. Grease the bottom. <sighs> That's intense. And then we just pour the batter straight into the pan, and this smells. So stinking good. I wish I could explain it. Oh, this is such a nice dough. I'm gonna salmonella. I mean, I dare you. Oh, that tastes good. I'm just spreading the dough out as evenly as I can. You know, I'm glad I made this. I almost made a two die four banana bread cake something, but 
I feel like my heart will be much happier with this. Mm. Into the oven, we're gonna have a problem. 325 degrees for 40 minutes. It says do not over bake. Wish me luck. All right, it's time to cut the uh, apple crumb, whatever this thing is called. Looks really good, it's solid. Nothing's like falling apart. Well, I say that, but I'm sure something will fall apart. I'm gonna try to delicately cut this to, I don't know, about six pieces. So let's take a peek on one. Middle piece is probably best. Oh boy! Well, this did not disappoint, did it? Wow. All right, uh, well, I'm gonna try to plate these and then I'll take a bite. And then these puffs, I'm gonna take a bite into this one back here. Let you guys know. A bon appetit. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic. Holy cow. I would definitely make that again. Ooh, wow. So good. The cake is like 10 minutes into baking, but I realized I didn't put the uh, crumble on top. Oh, you guys. I'm probably ruining the cake because I took it out of the oven. It's probably gonna fall flat in the middle. But like, what am I supposed to do? Not put the crumble on there? Anyway, I'm just gonna throw it back in as fast as I can. Here are the enchiladas all finished. Oh my gosh. They smell amazing. The cilantro just takes it up a notch. You guys know herbs and citrus. Love to say it, they're the best. Here's the cinnamon roll cake, as if I even need to bite into it to tell you how delicious it is, but I will anyway. A boon appetit. Oh wow, definitely a dessert, definitely decadent. It tastes like a cinnamon roll, but easier. And you know how cinnamon rolls, like every single one has a hard end? You get the middle piece, every piece in this one. You know, well, almost every, do you, do you know what I mean? More middle pieces than edges. And that's what I like. I just pulled the lemon cake out of the oven. Oh my gosh, it smells absolutely incredible. I am going to, well I realized I didn't grease the sides of the spring form pan, so I'm going to try and see if it releases easily. Oh, look at that. Man, I love a good spring form pan. And there she is. Oh my gosh, I think you can put powdered sugar over top, but like, do you really need to? Look at that crumble. At the current moment, I have no idea how I'm going to like flip the cake over and get the bottom off. Oh, I guess I can just lift it up. It's too hot. I'll do that when it cools, but for now, we can just pretend the wax paper isn't there. Look how beautiful. She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. Oh my gosh, could you just eat it all? In one sitting, I could. Oh my gosh, look at all of it. Yum! Well, I figured out how to get it off. It took a little bit of finesse, a little bit of grace, and a little bit of patience. Delicious. I am going to uh, carve into this, mostly because, ugh, I mean, I just can't wait. Oh, wow. Wow! So delicious. Oh my gosh. that is it thank you so much for hanging out with me the real MVP today is the candle <laughs> the scent was delicious and it really kept me going I'm still waiting for the cake to come out but I'm sure I already showed you I thought about you know we didn't get to the sweet cream pancakes I know we I'll share that recipe with you eventually whether it's on Instagram or on like a vlog where I share breakfast or whatever I normally whenever I make pancakes I normally do a charcuterie board and then I thought, okay, well, let me just whip together the muffins really quick. My oven's on, let me do that. But someone grabbed a banana on their way out of here. I bought two ripe bananas from the grocery store this morning and I didn't even think, oh, let me buy bananas for my family to actually eat. So someone ate a super ripe banana. So I only have one, short story long, I don't have enough bananas to make the banana muffin, whatever they're called. But that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I hope I gave you some great breakfast inspiration or some fun recipes for you to try out with you or your family or whoever. If you want to, subscribe. Put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.